was becoming years in prison. Yeah. You know, my parents didn't bring me up to do that. It was, um, oh, for me, it was an awful existence. I'd had enough. Yeah. Um, and eventually I got out and I asked for help. very much for watching. I'm Michael Gazzilini. Love and best wishes to wherever you're watching. If you're going through a difficult time at the moment, speak to somebody. Reach out, ring up a friend. You know, a lot of people ring me every day and they say, Michael, I'm lonely, I'm depressed. But um, just realise whatever you're going through is impermanent. Uh, all the good things never last and all the bad things uh, don't last either. Uh, John Chikimas on the couch spent about three quarters of his life in a life of crime, 25 years behind bars for a variety of offences, um, armed robberies, drug trafficking, ripping people off, and um, um, thought at the end, is this really worth it? Was it worth it, Johnny? You know, look, I always wanted to live my life differently, you know, when I was always writing it to my parents, you know, when I get out, I'm going to get a job, get a car, get a licence, get a partner, get some kids happening and settle down. Mm. And I really wanted to deep down inside. But then I'd get out, I'd get out and I'd catch up with my mates, party up, <coughs> party up on the drugs. And I'll do that other stuff later. <laughs> yeah, I, haven't done that. That. I haven't done that for you a while. You escaped, John, eight times out of um, custody. Yeah, if that was from youth training centres. You know, yeah, was it that easy to escape? Uh, back in those days, yeah. Yeah, just... Yeah. Um, it was in Tirana, youth training centre and Marsbury. Didn't Marsby. dress up as a priest? No, not in those days. Or a prison days. guard? <laughs> no, the, you know, ended up as an army sergeant once too. Is you a bit like that movie? That uh, Have you seen that movie, Catch Me If You Can? <laughs> have you ever used any other uniforms and, uh, during your crime spree? I ended up as an army sergeant once. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah, we just got clothes from fancy dress shops. Did you? you know? Yeah, looking back, I could see the humour out of it, you know, but Jeez. it was it was just a, you know... Ways and means to get more money and where, when and how. And Johnny, was... um, in w one time you went to court and I think the court made an order saying uh, bail refused, but they mucked up the paperwork and uh, well, they released you out of Pentridge, is that right? Yeah, you know, I had um, bail refused for conspiracy arm robbery and theft of motor car and felon in possession of firearms and shortening a pistol, uh, carrying a pistol and um, yeah, they, I had um, bail refused and and due to some administration, administrational error, I was released from Pentridge. And, um, did I was you just slip up and uh, walk out, did you? Yeah, I didn't say anything. And, um, and then you went to Perth? Yeah, I went to Perth and um, I got arrested, you know, and living the life of active drug addiction and crime. I got done for robbing a bank and got seven and a half years prison. And um, How long after you left uh Oh, it was a Petridge. couple of years later, yeah. So but then uh, they started looking for me. It was all different sequence of events as the years went so on. So when you went to Perth, did you uh, shack up with somebody there? Or? Oh, just some old crew mates. Yeah? Yeah. Had mates there? Yeah, good friends. Uh, you know, we lived a similar lifestyle, but they were good people. Before you went to the they're bank... They all good people. John, before you went to the bank and did the armed robbery, did you go the, the day before, walk in, have a look where everybody is? No. <coughs> no? <coughs> I looked at it driving past and I thought, that looks good. You know, and then um, and then I went, I owed some money and I thought, oh, it's got to be done. Being an expert at, um, say, say these... Uh, wasn't an expert because I got caught. <laughs> <laughs> Bank robberies, all right, you're talking to your mate. How long have you got before the cops come in those days? Uh, A window of 15 the, minutes, 20 15, minutes? 15, 20 minutes, yeah. Yeah? Mm, I've got seven and a half years prison. And looking back at now today, looking back at the reality of my past lifestyle, prison saved my life. Prison saved your life. A the, the, lot, lot of the... Um... But I didn't have a life. Things weren't getting any better. From months in prison, no. it was becoming years in prison. Yeah. You know, my parents didn't bring me up to do that. It was... Um, oh, for me, it was an awful existence. I'd had enough. Yeah. Um, and eventually I got out and I asked for help. It That's was great. Best, it was the best thing I ever did. You know, look, I didn't even know how to cook. When I became a single parent as years went on, mm. <coughs> after a failed rehab romance, um, and I ended up with two baby boys, eight months old and 21 months old, you know, like I, I didn't even know how to cook because in prison you don't have to cook. You don't have to wash clothes. I didn't so even simple. know that you don't wash jumpers with towels or white T-shirts with jeans because I never had to do it. What, John, when you left uh, after being sort of incarcerated, well, I know it was on and off, but uh, society had changed around you. Um, did you sort of look around and think, God, I don't like this? 
Um, when I when I was released from prison after doing four years in Perth, um, and I was paroled to a drug and alcohol rehab, they just said, "Pack your stuff, you're out. You know, you got parole." And I went, "Huh?" And I jumped on the train and I ended up at Perth Station, um, peak hour. I've been locked up for four years. And I've just got a box in my hand. I've got a long black beard, and um, and it was peak hour. There's people everywhere running around all in a hurry. I froze. And I went straight to a phone box and phoned up my drug dealer. And I said, "Help! I can't move. You know, it was I was scared." You didn't owe him any money, the drug dealer. No, no, no. Is it mate? And yeah, and he picked me up and I went to his place for the night and um, he wouldn't give me no drugs. Wouldn't he? No. And he said, no. Yeah. What was wrong with him? And he wouldn't give me none. And he said, no, John. He said, I'm not getting, letting you get back to where you were before. Good. Uh, he was a good drug he was a good, Yeah, he was a good person. He was a nice bloke. You know, people that sell drugs do crime. doesn't mean they're bad people. You know, like, there's some good people. I, well, I'm hearing you. Just because we do a wrongful act, it doesn't mean we're No, look, I've wrongful got tattoos people. all over me. And, then, you know, I've got Jesus tattooed on one side beside my heart. And I've got Ned Kelly on the other. You know, and for me... And Nick Kelly was a good person, just made a few mistakes, same as me, you know. John, back in the old days, uh, the coppers were a lot tougher. You'd get a good flogging when you didn't get caught, a good kicking on the ground. Um, these days, everything's very soft and mm. crimes go through the roof. Tell me about um, when you did get captured by the uh, by the detectives. Always a flogging, mandatory flogging? Not always, you know. No? Look, I had to do a lot of homework on that. I, you know, I resented all anything regarding authority, it was always I was. That's the way I was regarding authority. You know, like them and us. And now, uh, and now it's you, you know, know we're all human. But, you know, we're all human beings. You know, like I had to do a bit of homework in that area. You know, like I um I resented all police, every single one of them. You know, and have that fear and that anger and resentment. You know, and a friend of mine said to me, John, you know. Let's go back to not all police, individual ones, and have a look at what's going on for you regarding why you're angry with them. And um, Good attitude. Yeah, and we might yeah. talk about the turnaround for the great men after the next break, Johnny. Okay. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on, folks. We'll be back very shortly. Good evening, Australia. Welcome to the show. I'm Michael Kazilny. Tough times never last. Thank you very much for the pleasure of your company. Uh, I've been a criminal defence lawyer for uh, many years. I started in the, uh, the justice system back in the uh, sort of 86, I think. Um, uh, what I'm always inspired with is when people decide, uh, no more bullshit, we're going to turn our lives around rather than continuing the uh, life of crime. Uh, on tonight's uh, show, John Chikima. Uh, spent about 25 years of his life uh, at some of the toughest prisons around Australia for offences ranging from armed robberies to drug trafficking and um, jumping into people's houses. Uh, John, thanks for coming and you're an inspiration how you turned your life around mm. um, because people tend to judge, don't they? If we looked at your antecedents, as they used to call them, mm. it'd be like a book. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah for me, I was start, first started I got into trouble when I was 11. 11? 11. 11 was, well, was for housebreaking and um, factory breaking mm. and um, truancy. <laughs> and, and, and can you remember what, um, because it builds up, doesn't it? The magistrates, um, they tell you off, Mr. Chikima, you better not do this again. It's almost mm. like a three-strike rule. Yeah. Can you remember what, uh, what, what they said when they put you in for your first sentence? Um, I was made a ward of the state when I was 11. It was the first time I went to court and um, I was locked up. Yeah. In Beltara, um, I was eleven, and I'd spent two months in in there, and then I and I felt like I belonged. You know, you like, I, I felt like I belonged. You know, like connected with the other guys there, and yeah. it was weird. You know, because um, when I was nine years old, I look back at it now, come to some understanding. My father got really sick and mm. um, with a brain hemorrhage, and um, and that when he was put in the ambulance, it was the first day I went to school, mm. and um, 
I never wagged school before, and um, and I continued to do that. And um, then I started mixing with other guys, and we're doing breaking in the houses, and and so I got caught and ended up in Baltara. I was class day class me is uncontrollable. John, you know, when you did armed robberies uh, with a no, sort many, of... That was many years later. Many years later, we progressed to that. So you were, you sort of went up the sentencing scale. Well, you know? I went up what they call, for me, is the criminal ladder. Yeah. You know, I started off with house breakings and yeah. then pinching cars, then assaults, then assault and robberies, then, um, and, and then felon in possession of firearms, and then conspiracy armed robbery. And so then you're, robbery of banks. And so you're a, a tough bloke and, and, and you carried firearms. Where do you get the firearms from? Um, no comment. <laughs> no, <laughs> no comment. But you're a good Christian now. You've got to tell me. Yeah, I am. Tell yeah. me, where, where did you get them from? Repent, prisoner. Well, like I ended up an active drug addict. Yeah. Um, I remember burning Pentridge in B Division when I was young and... Um, I was always full of anxiety. John, what sort of drugs? Heroin, speed, cocaine? No, speed. No coke? A little bit. That's the rich man's drug. Uh, uh, I um, ended up on the speed. But I was in B Division in Pantry tonight. Uh, the people I was mixing with, they said, don't go near them people. You know, they you know, hit up and um, you know, don't trust them and all this stuff. You know, and and um, but I, I knew some of them. And, um, because my thinking was always was always anxious for mail every day, always anxious for visits every fortnight, box visits. I was always thinking, 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 always anxious, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, you know, when I get out and all that. And John, I, had a hit, I had a hit of a drug and it stopped my mind. It stopped your mind. So, um, John, when you went into those banks or something with the, the weapon and that, you're, because you, you're, you're on the drugs, um, did you ever think it doesn't matter if... Um, if I have to kill somebody, what did you go no. in there even in those days thinking, no, I'm no. just going to scare them, I'm not going to no, shoot? I'm a good person, you know. I, was, um, I never thought about hurting anyone. No. You no, know, I just wanted money. You wanted money? I just wanted the money. I didn't want to hurt anyone, you Did know? you ever get a, a, a shitload of money? Yeah, but always, you know, what, it always you, get, goes. what, what, what you get always goes. It, doesn't it always last goes. Long, you know? Well, it always goes, folks, isn't it? I always think that life's got a perfect accounting system. Uh, it's almost like a life's like a game of boomerangs, you know. If you if you do all the wrong things, it's uh, every action has a, uh, a the same reaction. If we're kind to people and we do the right thing and we show kindness and honesty, uh, you know, those things will come back. But if we're angry or, or for example, our Melbourne underworld, if we go around uh, ripping people off and dealing drugs and doing all the things we're not supposed to do, um, all seventeen were gunned down and. Um, uh, you sort of just knew that was going to happen. It was also temporary when, when they went uh, w- around with their guns and their flashy cars and, you know, the fifty thousand cash in their pockets. We knew that uh, eventually uh, death would come and wipe them out. And mm. I think about twenty people got wiped out mm. during the uh, Melbourne Underworld War, John. Yeah, I, I didn't know. But you Melbourne. didn't know about those people. They were sort of no. after your life in crime, isn't it? No, yeah, I'm 57, I'm 58 this yeah. year. Yeah, although know, you would have known some a diff- of them. A different era. Different era, different crimes. Yeah. Um, no, these and, days, and what they do is none of my business anyway. So. Well, that's true. And these days there aren't many. Um, armed robbery was a thing of the past. I don't even think they've got the armed robbery squad anymore. No. But there used to be a lot in your days. Yeah. yeah no, like, for me, it was, you know, my life was always centered in where, when and how. Where, when and how? To get more money. To get what I needed, and, and to get what I needed, and, and and to get, and I always wanted to know people that were in that environment, you know, like, and, and that's everybody on you. That's how they were, you know. And I heard on the grapevine you dressed up as a Catholic priest one time and went to a bank. Yeah, um, I was dressed as a Catholic priest off my head on speed, you know. I had a few drug debts and um, and not not with a gun, you know, doing dud checks and um, you know, like. While I was at the counter doing the dud check, you know, like, I, this is not right. And I thought in myself, my true self came out and um, this is not right. This is not what my parents brought me up to do. But then the desperation of getting more money to get more, to pay my drug debts and get more drugs overrode the way I felt. And I got caught eventually and... Um, and was arrested and went to prison for it. And I thought to myself, well, I thought to myself, and I like, 
do the crime, you do the time, and that's it, you know. But how I felt in myself felt awful. I, I, this is not right. We might take people. a short break and uh, talk about um, how you got through that life and crime. But uh, thank you very much, viewers. Uh, We've got Johnny on the couch, and uh, what an amazing story. A life in crime, but you'll hear very soon how he turned his life around. much for watching. I'm Michael Gazelny. I'm talking to John Chikima, uh, 25 years in prison, ran about, escaped from um, uh, youthful detention eight times. Then he um, got released one time from Pentridge when he wasn't supposed to be released, ended up in Perth, uh, did another bank robbery, ended up in jail for seven years there. He was on uh, drugs and um, at the end he thought, God, what's this all about? You know, what about changing my life around? And he did. He um, he um, cleaned up his life, and uh, he's been alcohol-free now and drug-free for about 10 years. Uh, unfortunately, four years ago, he had to do another stint of four months in prison, something he owed the system. Something. So there was a 20-year break from prison, mm. and they caught up with you, and they, what do they say? Um, well, they came to my house. I just finished work, and I was just about to jump in the shower. There was a, a famous... Knock on the door. You had um, that for, for a while, John. For a long time, for 19 years. But I always sat in fear because I always knew I had that. I, I, I was going to go and deal with it once my boys had um, started getting on with their own lives. Oh, um, you didn't think you died of natural death? No, I always knew it was there. I always sat in fear. If I got pulled up for a license check, I'd always be in fear of going home for a couple of days. It was an awful experience. And, um, well, for me, I, um, when they arrested me, you know, like, there was um, DHS for me boys. It was like two married couples there, and um, they arrested me, and then the armed robbery squad on a Friday, and then on the Monday, the armed robbery squad from Perth were there. and um, They came as well? Yeah, they came from Perth over to Melbourne to act for, apply for my extradition back to Melbourne. Oh. And, um, yeah. And I so they went, took it very seriously? Yeah, yeah. It was for armed robbery on a bank. It wasn't for shoplifting. Oh, it was for armed rob, but you'd served the time for that already. Well, I served the time, but they released me on parole to a drug and alcohol rehab, and um, nice. 10 days later I left that rehab. You know, like, nice. the goodness out of it now, you know, I went four months in prison and I experienced love in a whole new area of from the community. So. I'm a part of the... I'm, I, because of all my jail stuff, I always never felt a part of. I've always felt yeah. different that people know. People just know, you know, I'm just another human being in this So you group. changed your, you, you started showing love inside and, and that's what you give out and as a return there's much more love in your life. Yeah, yeah, you know, look, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I am a good person. You know, I made, a lot of mis- I, I made a lot of mistakes, you know, mm-hmm. like I think now my whole life was centred in where, when and how, what have you got, how mm-hmm. can I get it and let's go, you know, and that's how and I thought everybody else was, you know, mm-hmm. like today I think about how can I help someone today mm-hmm. without expecting anything in return. Sometimes I think about what can I get out, but, you know, but, <laughs> but I don't act on it, you know, and I, and I love help, you know, I go to detoxes and talk and, and you do that? Plant, plant, yeah, and I plant a seed of hope in others, you know, that life can be different for them, you know, nice. I was involved in um, prison fellowship for a couple of years, even this is with this warrant from Perth, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. I was still, you know, going to Port Phillip and Melbourne and Rand Centre. Yeah, the Stepping Stones program and Life in Transition job. program. And, Good on you. Know, you really... Uh... Oh, my life is... I'm not the person I was. You know, not, all, you know like, um, I've got my own little lawn mowing round. I do tattoos. You, you do t- t- you're a tattooist as well? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You know, like, and I was just in a... I was in a play in the last two years um, called The Chat. Yeah. Um, and it's going up for awards next week on the 27th. You know, like... I don't know where my, you know, I never, when I got out of rehab last, you know, I want, I went into that rehab really wanting to do, because I used to pray when I went to court, I hope that I don't get locked up, you know, but for my own selfish reasons, you know, and, um, but today, you know, like I used to use drugs every morning, you know, every morning, no matter what, you know. What, heroin? 
no speed, or whatever was there, you know, but mainly speed was my drug of choice. And now I get up, for me, I get on my knees every morning, you know. Like the last rehab I went into, you know, I said, please tell me what I've got to do. So it sounds like, folks, he's replaced uh, speed with uh, God and he shows gratitude in the mornings. And, and now he says, good, clean living, honesty and no drugs and doing the right thing by people uh, equals happiness. And that's so true, isn't it? If we go out there showing loving kindness and uh, we become selfless and, um, you know, we smile a bit more and compliment people. And um, they say if you make somebody else's day, God will make yours. But there's so many grumpy faces around, isn't there? So many people have their own problems there and they forget to, to ask about others. This week, why don't you just forget yourself for a while? Just forget your problems and really turn that spotlight onto the other person and find out whether other people are suffering. Find out why that person is in the gutter, homeless, um, wanting to beg money, you know, find out about people and show a bit of kindness and watch all the miracles come back in and out of your life. I think kindness is definitely lacking, John. Um, for me, you know, like I always wanted to live my life differently. Um, and I, yeah, I heard other people that they were doing it and heard about their similarities mm. and hope. Hope for me is hearing other people's experience. It gave me hope, you know, and if, if I keep on doing what I always done, I'll keep on getting what I always got. Mm. You know, um, and when, when I think it, you know, I'm powerless. What comes into my thinking? I but reckon I, one day take... you'll end up on a on a house on a hill with a long driveway. Oh, someone's offered me one, <laughs> and, and, and I thank God for that experience. You know, like you know, I don't know where my life's going, but I know it's good. If I don't do what I always done. Good things will happen. I'm hearing you. I'm yeah. hearing you. And I suppose what you're doing now, you're just sort of surrendering to, to God, aren't you? you, you we, we know we're not in charge. No. We're surrendering. Yeah. 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 I've got freedom from the obsession of using drugs and doing mm. crime. You know, like I heard someone mention, you know, once that when they use drugs, they do crime, and when they do crime, they use drugs. And I, and I never forgot that, you know, and I walked away. I walked away and had to think about it and had a look back at my past lifestyle, mm. exactly the same. I have not done crime since the last time I used drugs. Congratulations, John. You know? John, thanks very much for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. I'll, we'll have you on again. I really want to um, – I love people who turn their life around. Can you come on again in a, in a, in um, a couple of to. months? All right, we'll have you on soon. Thanks mm. very much. No problem. I wish you my all pleasure. the best in the future and all the happiness. And um, A friend of mine, I used to say to you, have a good day. He said uh, – have a God day. Someone, <laughs> someone else put the other row in. I love that. Thanks for mm. coming on. And the viewers, thank you very much. Love and best wishes. Remember, tomorrow's another day. Just, uh, you know, wake up and show gratitude about all the great things in life and um, just watch what comes back. Good night, everybody.